That's it. I'm cutting you off. Good morning. This is Chris Shoemaker, also known as Yehuda Ben Shomer, and you're listening to Coffee with Chris, the time of the day where we share a cup of coffee and share a bit of the Word of God. Thank you so much for joining me this Wednesday morning for a hot cup of coffee and a hot cup of the Word of God. We're in the Torah portion of Vayigash, which means he sent. And today's passage, today's Sidra and or Aliyah, is taken from Genesis chapter 33, verses 6 through 20. Let's begin reading at verse 12. So if you remember, Jacob and Esau has met. It didn't turn out to be the World War III everybody thought it was going to be. In other words, Esau was treating Jacob nicely, and Jacob was a little bit fishy. He's like, eh, something seems a little bit off here. This isn't the Esau that I know. I'm not so sure he's changed like he's claiming he has. Verse 12, then he said, let's journey and be on our way, uh, and I'll go ahead of you. So this is Esau talking to Jacob. Let's journey and be on our way, and I'll go ahead of you. He continued, uh, my Lord knows that the children are tender. So Jacob is replying to Esau. My Lord knows that the, Jacob, that the children are tender and that the flocks and the cattle that are in my care are nursing. So if we push them too hard just one day, all the flocks will die. Please let my Lord pass on ahead of your servant and I'll move on further gradually at a pace suited for the livestock that uh, the livestock that and before me at the pace suited to the children until I come to my Lord in Seir. Then Esau said, well, please let me leave with you some of the people who are with me. That was a red flag to Jacob, I think. He's like, but he said, what's this? Let me find favor in my Lord's eyes. I think Jacob was afraid he was going to leave some of those 400 men behind to slaughter them after he left their sight. So Esau wouldn't get his hands dirty. That's kind of what I was thinking. Okay, verse 16. So on that day, Esau returned on his way to Seir. Did Jacob follow? No, verse 17 says, but Jacob journeyed to Sukkot, totally opposite direction, and built houses for himself and for his livestock, he made booths. That's the reason the place is called Sukkot. So we see that Jacob cuts Esau off. This is a struggle that a lot of believers go through. They think that just because you're a believer, that you're supposed to make nice and make peace with everybody. And if not, you got to do whatever you can to make sure that, that you're living at peace with everybody or else you can't offer a sacrifice to God or you can't pray to God. Let me tell you something. If you hold out the olive branch and they slap it back in your face and they won't take that olive branch, you've done your part. You've tried to mend the fence. You've tried to make things right. And they still haven't changed. They're still treating you like dirt. They're still toxic. They're still... Uh, 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 backstabbers and they're not going to change, then you have every right to cut them off. Doesn't mean that you have to treat them nasty or bad, but you can walk away. You don't have to let them back in your life. You don't have to let them be buddy buddy with you anymore. So Jacob smelled something fishy. Jacob um, discerned through this whole encounter that Esau had not truly changed and he was still the toxic person that he knew when he first left Esau's presence. So Jacob cut him off. And let me tell you, that's okay. Maybe some of you are dealing with a very hard relationship and you've done everything in your power, bending over backwards to make things right with somebody or to please somebody or to smooth things over. And they just keep stabbing you in the back. They won't accept your apology or they keep blaming it on you anyway, or they keep drudging things up or they just create a lot of drama in your life. Well, I hope this makes you feel better that you have biblical permission to cut them off. You don't have to let them back in their life if they're not truly repentant and if they have not truly changed because God cares about your welfare. Guys, thanks so much for listening. Go out there and have a great day. Shalom and God bless.